passed the, the CPA exam in the 60s. Yeah, in, in 1962, I passed the exam. Uh, and, uh, you, you've told her the story about going in to sit for the Oh exam. yeah, that uh, you know that that was not necessarily a pleasant experience. But uh, <laughs> on on the last time I sat for the exam, um, no, that at the time at that time it was being held. The exam was being held in the Capitol, and um, there were two other blacks uh, who were sitting with me, uh, uh, Mr. Ratliff and uh, Ken Days. And the three of us had, you know, worked and studied together. And at that time, they had the rule that you are not to sit next to anyone with whom you work or study. And um, we were scattered about uh, uh, down front in the uh, Capitol building for the exam. And we got gotten there early so we could get good seats. Because at that time, you know, smoking was allowed all over everywhere. And, uh, you know, normally during that exam, there was, there was so much smoking. And, but down front, it, there was less, and so we chose to sit down front. Mm -hmm. um, the chair at that time uh, was uh, Charlie Lofton. Mm -hmm. uh, he was originally from Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came over to me and said, uh, I, I want to talk to you about something. And he came over and he said to me, he says, uh, I wonder if you all would sit in the back of the back. And I, I exploded. I didn't know that I would have done that. If someone had asked me, you know, how would you handle that kind of situation, I probably would have said something differently than what I did. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was all over him, you know, and as I said, you really should have sent us the letter saying that the seating arrangement, you know, had been changed and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, he ran back up to the front of the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to the desk and he talked with his buddies up there and then he came back and then he said, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, well, would you mind uh, sitting next to each other? You know, one, two, three. The three black yeah, yeah, individuals. Uh -huh, yes. I said, no, not at all. We don't mind that. But I said, man, you know, if you had some special place for us to sit, you know, you should have told us about that, you know, before coming down here. And I said, I necessarily have to write the AICPA. You know, I was off all over. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the guys were just standing there looking, you know, because he didn't, I thought he would have addressed some of them if he was going to you know, say something like that. But he addressed me. And, uh, you know, then I would tell the, the fellas. And uh, I guess he felt more comfortable, you know, doing it that way. And uh, at that time, people would come into the Capitol building uh, in, in the uh, balcony and look over. And what he did not want to see was these little black faces down front. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, so we would sit in the back so we would not be seen. And I said, this is ridiculous, you know. And um, that was my last sitting. The guy said, you, you became so angry that you be that was practice, <laughs> the toughest part of the exam and the longest part of the exam. But uh, that was the uh, time that I finally did that. That was the last section that I had to do, practice, and I passed at that time. I understand they didn't send your certificate right away. No, well, I had been teaching for years uh, at that point and had worked with uh, Lazette Hale and uh, J.B. Bladen. They, they were the uh, blacks who had accounting offices. Um, Mr. Lockman took the view that uh, uh, I was not getting um, enough, I did not have enough practice. Uh, you know, you, you're supposed to have two years of experience uh, or have taught most of the accounting courses. I had taught just about, at that time, uh, most of the accounting courses. And... Uh, should have been able to qualify simply based on my teaching experience. But um, at any rate, he held my certificate up. And finally, um, a guy who was a, a friend to um, really um, Gene Talmadge, uh, uh, I knew, and I simply said to him one day, look, do you know anybody down there in that state house who can uh, accelerate my getting my certificate? Mm -hmm. So he says, what do you mean? And I said, I have not received my C uh, CPA certificate. And by the way, at that time, normally when you received the, the certificate, you know, you were invited to a luncheon and uh, awarded the certificate. Well, blacks were never included in that uh, process uh, uh, at that time. And uh, I uh, <coughs> decided that I was not going to keep waiting for my certificate. And uh, he in introduced me to uh, Jimmy Bentley, uh, who was then insurance commissioner. And he says, what you mean, Johnny? You haven't received your certificate. He said, I'll see that you get that certificate. So the well, next day or two, someone called me and said, you know, come on down. But uh, uh, because of the little set two we had had about the seating arrangement, uh, one of the commissioners had said to me, the commissioner from Richmond County, 
the county of Augusta is in, and I, I knew him, and he said, Johnny, he says, old Charlie is going to give you hell. <laughs> and old Charlie tried to. <laughs> so he's gone on now. And uh, at any rate, I, I, I got my certificate then. Uh -huh. We talked earlier about your difficulty in fulfilling the experience requirement mm -hmm. for the CPA license. Mm -hmm. How did your students obtain their experience? And could you talk about the importance of Arthur Anderson and some of the other firms that helped those students to fulfill their requirement? Well, when Arthur Anderson and the other uh, seven in uh, institutions or uh, firms that um, uh, when national uh, organizations began to come to the Atlanta University Center campus, um, they were looking uh, for students who were going to be integrated into their firms. And uh, it was in that context that uh, we began to have opportunities to go into national firms. Earlier, the only way you could get experience was to, uh, you know, locate the uh, um, Lars Ed Hale or Blayton, uh, S. B. Blayton. They were the two major ones. Uh, there were a few other blacks. Uh, Mr. Dare had passed the CPA exam uh, much earlier. Um, but there were a few blacks uh, who had uh, the CPA. And you had the requirement for getting certified was you had to have two years under a certified public accountant. Well, that was just a deterrent in terms of students who were able to pass the exam and not get uh, the practice experience. It was just uh, limited up until, uh, I would say, the mid-60s, really. It was that we had a breakthrough, really, in the mid-60s when the um, Big Eight opened up and simply said, well, we'll come to your campus, we'll recruit your students, we'll give your students the opportunities to uh, you know, have internships with us. Did that discourage students at that time, uh, students of color, from going into accounting, do you believe? Yeah, I'm sure some were discouraged, you know, but uh, I think what you have to recognize is, is that uh, the opportunity for success and the desire uh, to be successful in a given profession will, you know, top that. I mean, you know, even you, you, if you have to leave uh, uh, the South and go. And of course, as I had mentioned earlier, there was the time when the state of Georgia paid your tuition to go b beyond the Mason-Dixon line. I was a recipient of that benefit. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, uh, that was probably the best thing that happened for me. Uh -huh. Because when I uh, you know, came back, uh, it was much easier to have opportunities to teach uh, at a lot of places that I would not have had had I not had that uh, degree from New York. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and that's why... <clears throat> Most of the uh, persons who passed the exam were encouraged to at least open a business, get a business license, so that you can be the CPA who provides that sort of assistance to students who could not um, get the experience. That, that's just the way it was. Mm -hmm.